So students, I know that this is almost lunchtime in some places. So for your lunchtime viewing pleasure, I'm very happy to, I know, <laughs> to um, introduce you again for some of you. And for some of you, this is your first time to our really good Connected North friend and, and a great friend to Connected North at home, Kareen Davidson-Taylor from the Royal Botanical Gardens. And today she's going to talk about extreme insects. Uh -huh. Personally, I'm not sure if I'm brave enough to watch all of this, but I know for those of you who were able to and loved the tarantula the other day, I'm gonna turn you over to Kareen and we will see you guys in a little bit. Wonderful. Thanks, Mally. And thanks, Katie. And yes, we have, I, I don't have a, a lot of live extreme insects, but I do have some insects here that I do want to share with you as we go along. And I have some pretty cool video of some insects that I love. So there's lots of, of, uh, of uh, things for you to see. And I'm hoping that you're going to want to ask some questions too. So I know that there is, I believe, a place for questions, and I think Mally is going to help me answer those. And there's my name. Okay, so let me start off, first of all, just so that, because I mean, there's so many people here from so many different places. Let's just start off to sort of let people know where everybody's from. And I know we've got people from Ikala, we've got people from Vancouver, we've got people from Fort Francis, from Sioux Lookout. We've got people also from our little neck of the woods, which is down here in Southern Ontario. And we are right here on the tip of Lake Ontario. There's Toronto, there's Niagara Falls, but we, Royal Botanical Gardens is right here. So it's this great, great big area of green lots and lots of plants, lots and lots of different animals. And so we're going to be taking a look at some of those plants and animals that might be found there, but we're also going to be taking a look at some animals that are not found there. So let me go a little bit further. And by the way, I'm not actually at Royal Botanical Gardens today. Um, our building is closed. So I'm actually in a little community called Guelph which is right up there. So I'm in Guelph, a little bit further up. There we are, there's Guelph, that's where I am right now. So I'm in Guelph right here and Royal Botanical Gardens is right there. So not doing a big drive and saving my ecological footprint, you might say. So that's a little bit about where I am, but what I'd like to do is I'm going to just stop for a second and switch over to, an, uh, to my to my um, slide, which has my presentation on it. Let me just see where it is. Oh, that's interesting. I can't see it. So just a minute. Yeah. I'll let you know when it pops up. Yeah, no, it's just, it's um, I'm seeing everything else but the one I want. Interesting. Okay, so let's. Shawu would like to say his name. So is that the way we say it, Shawu? Kazmi. Yes. Good. Thank you. I'm glad to hear. Okay, so this is what I want to share. Now let's just see if it'll allow me to share it. So hold on. Let's see if this will. There it is. Okay. So, oh no, it's decided to go to the other. There we go. So can you see a, a, a presentation there? You see a slideshow, okay. So there are over a million species of insects. So if you look at this picture, over half of all the living things on this world are insects. And if some of you were with me a couple of weeks ago, you may remember insects are the ones that have six legs, three body parts, and two antennae. But there are also other animals that live in the same environments as insects, and that includes invertebrates. So some of the animals that I'm going to be talking about, they might actually not be insects, but related to insects. But um, what I also wanted to show you was this, that the biggest group of all the insects is this, the Coleoptera, or in other words, the beetles. Now you may have 
been introduced to a beetle the last time we were here. And let me see if I can get my beastie up here and we'll see if we can switch over so you can see. There, so, and, and this little guy is, is not particularly big. Let's see if we can see him. Yeah, we'll have to move back a little bit. There he is. So there is a nice little darkling beetle. And I'm going to take him out and I'm going to put him on my hand because I really want you to see how big he is compared to my hand or compared to my fingers because this relates to what we're going to take a look at. So he's not much bigger than my first joint of my finger. Just a little guy. Not very big at all, but he's very common. And he's, so this is what he looks like, okay? So I'm gonna try and get him off my fingers, but I'm gonna tell you this much. It might be a little bit tricky because if you look down, see those little hooks on his, the end of his legs? That's what he's using to, to stay onto my finger. It doesn't hurt me at all. And he's looking for food. You can see he's, he's sort of moving around trying to find some food because he thinks that I've, I, I might maybe taste good or at least there might be some smells on here that he's really enjoying. So he's looking for something to eat, but this relates to an insect that I am gonna show you, and it's the largest insect in the world. So let me put him, let me try to put him back. Yeah, yeah see, he gets very, I put him back and what I'm going to do is I'm going to switch back to my other, my other present, my other one. Okay. And we're going to go back here and hopefully, no, okay, maybe if I do it this way. There. Okay. So you can see that there's quite a wide variety and Beetles are the largest. So some of the insects I'm going to show you today, some of them are, quite a few of them are beetles. But this one, so I've got a huge little collection here of some of the different extremes that we might want to talk about. But I'm going to go to biggest. There. How about that? This is a titan beetle. And if you look at your own hand, that beetle. Corrine, all I can see is a gray screen, just so you know. We might have to stop and reshare. Uh, yeah, that's what I was afraid of. Okay. Okay. So we'll get it up there. Let's see if we can, because it was work. Yeah. See, and the thing is, it doesn't allow me. I'm sorry, but it's not, it's not allowing me to, to, to click on the. On the on the PowerPoint that I want to show, which is really there. Can you see that? Yeah, we can. Okay. Okay. So if you look at your hand, so look at your hand. And I want you to put your other hand on top. That's how big that beetle would be. It would cover your hand. And this is called the Titan beetle. And it's from South America. It's a big one, but you can see that it's very much like the beetle that I had on my little finger. So my little beetle, my little darkling beetle that I showed you, it would even be smaller than one of these joints on this Titan beetle's leg. It also has a bit of a bit, bit bigger back there. So it's one of the longest beetles but there are also beetles that we have here. And actually, this isn't a beetle. This is called a bug. This is the giant water bug. But this is the largest insect that we have here in Canada. And I don't have any living ones here. It's just been too cold. But what I do have is I have, and once again, I'm going to see if I can share this. We'll see what happens. See if you can see this. 
Now it's in a special case. So it's in a case that looks like this, but I wanted to show that to you so that you could get an idea of the size of it. Carrie wants to know if it bites. It does. So it doesn't bite like biting like we bite. But what it does is you see those front legs right there. Those front legs are what it's going to use to hold on to its prey. So it might feel like it's biting you. But this is a real one. I'm going to put my finger beside it. So you can see, even though I know it's in this box, but you can see it's as big as my finger, easily as big as my finger. So just imagine the size of that. Um, but when, but it captures its food, it uses those front claws to capture its food. But here's the thing, what's really cool about a bug, and there really are in a type of insect called a bug. And a bug is a type of insect that puts its proboscis or its mouth part into another insect. And here, let me just stop sharing for a second so that you can see what I'm talking about. So it puts its mouth part into its, uh, into, its, into its prey and it sticks it in there. It puts some enzymes or something that's, that will help digest that other prey. It will make a slushy out of that prey and then just sip it up. But what also is really interesting about this insect is that this is one of the rare insects where the male looks after the eggs. So I'm going to see if I can find that picture for you that I want to show you because that is really cool that the male looks after the young. So here, let me just get this picture because this is really unusual. This doesn't happen very often at all. So I'm going to switch over and I'm going to share that with you so you can see that picture. So you'll see in a second, it'll come up in a second. Oh, it didn't do it again. Okay. So there is the male and look at that's its proboscis right there. You see where my mouse is going? That's its proboscis. And that's what's gonna stick into the prey, use it to suck it up. But those are the eggs. And so the female will lay the eggs on that male insect and he will be responsible for making sure that those eggs are in the water and getting enough oxygen so they'll survive. And then once they come out, then that's it. So he's a pretty neat insect. Okay. Um, there's lots of things that I'm going to be sharing with you, but I'm prepared to, to stop and try and answer some questions because maybe some of the things that you want to know about are slides that I've already got. Kieran wants to know if the, on the mail, can the eggs roll off or are they stuck there somehow? They are stuck there. Now, let me see if I can. So since we're talking about eggs and let me see what it will do. Okay. So since we're talking about eggs, I have a really cool picture of lots of different types of insect eggs. Isn't that cool? Can you see that? All the different shapes and sizes. Those are insect eggs. But what I do have is I have a little video. Uh, mm -hmm. I wonder if you'll be able to see it. So I'm going to try and play it and you tell me if you can see it. Yep. Well, that's cool. Yeah. So I'm going to just move it there. So this ladybug, she's laying eggs. And so would be the same thing for a female giant water bug to lay eggs. And what they do is they put down this little sort of clear drop, which is almost like glue. And that's what that that's what how those eggs will stay in place. Let me see if there so so no, no, let me see if I I just want to there's a there 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 watch that. Watch that. So there's a little drop of clear liquid that will come out and then the egg will come out. Here it comes, just watching. You guys are patient. There 
it is. So there was a little drop of glue that came out and that's exactly what would happen with the, with the, uh, the, when the female laid her eggs on the male giant water bug. Okay, so let's see what we've got here. I'm going to go up here to my, I'm going to go up here and because I have some, would, yep, uh, yep. Shawa wants to know if the eggs are big or small, like how big would those eggs be? Oh, those eggs are going to be, so if you looked at your little fingernail, if you looked at your little fingernail, those eggs might be, well, for a, for a ladybug, they're even smaller, but if you looked at your little fingernail, if you looked at the very top of your little fingernail, those eggs would be maybe about the size of your, or about half the size of your, the top of your little baby fingernail, no more than that. And there are some eggs that are tiny, 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 so tiny that you could fit 10 of them on the top of your finger. So for instance, a monarch butterfly egg, it, you, you would probably be able to fit about 10 of them on the top of your finger. So let's see if there are, uh, see if there are some things that you would like to know about because I've got some pretty cool animals here that uh, are at least some, some things I want to share with you. So let's try this one. So I've got, we've looked at biggest. So how about we take a, we, we continue that because there are some other really big ones. So there's our Titan beetle. And there's our water bug, our giant water bug, the largest one in Canada. This is the heaviest insect. Now, this is called the Goliath beetle. And when you think of Goliath, you think of giant, right? But not only is it a really, really big beetle, and once again, it would be able to fit in the palm of your hand, or maybe bigger than the palm of your hand, but look at the size of the larva. That is huge. And, and let me, so I do have larva here. Remember my darkling beetles? I do have a few larva here and I'll put that, I'll put one of them on my hand just so you can compare because I'll tell you, my larva that I have are nowhere near that size. So I'm gonna put one on my hand and I'm gonna see, oh, Silly guy. And I'm going to stop sharing and I'm going to switch over, I'm going to switch over to another camera, okay, so that you can see what it is that I'm talking about. And there we go. Okay, so I'm going to put my hand under here. And here, let me just change the light a little bit. There he is. So, do you remember that Goliath beetle? He took up the whole palm of his hand. Well, there's my darkling beetle larva or a mealworm. And he's not very big at all. There he is. But he is an insect, just like the adult is. You can see he's got three legs on one side, three legs on the other. There we go. So there are lots of different sizes of animals. Let's see if I can share my PowerPoint. No, that's not the one I wanted to share. So I'm gonna put that guy back and I'm gonna get my PowerPoint that I was sharing. There, there's my, can you see my Goliath beetle now? We can see them and uh, Shawu wants to know if some of these insects, if they bit you, would you die? No, as a matter of fact, you wouldn't. You might have a bit of a sore finger or something like that, but they, you wouldn't die from these beetles, of these insects. Insects, when they inject venom in you or, and, and we don't have, we have very few of those insects that would do that. But when they do, they actually, are not doing it, it takes a lot of energy for them to do that. It takes a lot of energy. So they, it's very difficult for them. 
This is one of the longest beetles, but this is the blue walking stick. So I'm going to show you another walking stick. This is the walking stick from Borneo, and it is the longest, it's even longer than that beetle. Look at that. It's 14 inches long or probably it's over 30 centimeters long. Look at that huge thing. Now we have in we have walking sticks here in Canada, but not nearly as big as that. But then there are also ants that are really big from South America called hunting ants. Look at those great big jaws, huge great big jaws. And look at that ant is over two inches. It's about two inches. Now that doesn't seem very long, but most ants are maybe a quarter of an inch. They're just maybe, uh, maybe they're less than one centimeter. So big, big difference. Okay. We have some questions that people would like to ask. Oops, people would like to ask, or maybe if they want to jump to one of my things here. Okay, so we're to, um, we've got do daddy long do, do daddy long legs bite? No, uh, Harry. And, and if they do bite, it's once again, it's not really because our skin is really tough. So if they do bite, it's just a little pinch. Um, but once again, you know, if something bites you, your first reaction probably is to go like that, is to, is to, is to brush it away. And if you do that, there's a good chance you're going to kill that insect. Well, that's why if, the, if they're going to bite something, they're going to bite something because they know that it is prey and they know that they won't get hurt, or at least they shouldn't get hurt. Um, but if they bite something bigger than them, it's because it's the last thing they can think of doing. It's what they call fight or flight response. So you, so either you, so sometimes it's better just to go away because meaning the insect doesn't want to hurt you too much. Okay. So what would you like to do? I saw someone say deadliest. I saw that one. So let's talk about we go to deadliest. And I think you're going to be surprised. So there's lots of choices. There's the bullet ant, there's the driver ant, and these all look really nasty. Like they could give you a they could give you a bit of a bite and possibly even a sting. But the one that surprises the people the most is that the mosquito is actually considered one of the deadliest insects. And that's because it can transmit diseases. So not so much in our Northern areas at all, but in more tropical areas, the mosquito is a very dangerous insect because it can pass on diseases to humans. In Northern temperate areas where we are, it's not the same thing. It's not going to pass those diseases on quite so much. Uh, if, if at all, but because it's just not warm enough. But in tropical areas, yeah, it is, it has killed more people than any other insect. And I think I saw someone say camouflage. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm going to click on here. Now, what do you see? Any, does anybody see anything? Ah, grasshopper, that's right. So this is a really good method of protecting themselves is camouflage. And lots of insects do protect themselves that way. Um, I've got one right here that you may or may not be able to see. I'm gonna just see if my machine will let me switch over. Maybe it will, maybe it won't. We'll see what happens. And do you, is it gonna let me switch over? Uh, there. So do you see my little friend? I 
And this is a, maybe somebody, maybe you can guess what it is. Does anybody know what it is? It is a caterpillar. It is a caterpillar, uh, a hairy, hairy bug. It's not a bug, but it is a caterpillar. This is known as a woolly bear. So this woolly bear is, it's not, let me see if I can get a little closer. Because what's interesting is the colors are black and orange. You can see just at the edge there. So the middle part of his body is sort of an orange, a dark orange. And then the top and the bottom of his body, where his head and the rest of his abdomen are, that's black. But if he were in the ground or if he were walking amongst some leaves, it would be very difficult to see him. Now, he was very active until just a few minutes ago. But I think he's going, ha ha, you think I'm dead, but I'm going to fool you. Because he is very much alive. What are you doing? I don't want to, I don't want to pester him too much. Oh, oh. Now he's going, hey lady, leave me alone. See him moving a little bit there? But what's interesting is what he will do, and this is, so they're coming out now after hibernating or after sort of being safe in leaves and under bark. So he's coming out now and you'll see them often on warm days walking across a pathway because what they're doing is they're looking for some food. Sometimes it takes them nearly two or three years to grow big enough. But when they grow big enough, what they do is they create a little cocoon. There's a cocoon and that cocoon is made out of their hair. So they make their cocoon out of their hair and eventually what will happen is they will, so it takes sometimes two or three years to become an adult. And I'm just trying to turn my adult over so you can see what she looks like. Ah, there. So there's the adult and it's called an Isabella tiger moth. There she is. So that's what it will become, but it sometimes takes two or three years at least before it will come out. Okay. What, uh, what's something else you might like to learn about? What, what, what's something, oh, I know. How about the strongest? So, Strongest one is a dung beetle. And yes, dung is poop, basically. Then they're the ones that roll that, and it's a beetle. They roll that poop together and they're gonna take it and put it in their, their, uh, their den, their, their, their home. But they can pull 1,141 times their own weight. So you go, well, how does that compare? Well, look at this. So that is like a human. There's a little person right there pulling, pulling six double decker buses. It's not amazing. I mean, how many times can you be able to pull a double decker bus? Okay. So it's, it's a lot of work. So beetles are a very, very strong animal. But the other one that's really strong is this rhinoceros beetles. And there are all sorts of different types of rhinoceros beetles. But this rhinoceros beetle can pull or carry about 850 times its weight. Whereas humans, we can really only carry about 17 times our weight. So 850,000, 850 times their weight. That's an amazing amount. Okay, what would you like to, we've got about uh, maybe five minutes, maybe with some questions. What would you like to do now? Okay, so my problem is I can't see the chat while I'm looking. So that's where Mally and, and no, Kate um, are my big helpers. Kieran and Carrie would like to see the fastest. 
fastest. Okay, there's my fastest. Oh, fastest. Okay. So the fastest running insect, because insects can swim, they can fly, they can run. The fastest running insect is actually an Australian tiger beetle. Now we have tiger beetles here in Ontario and in Canada, but not as fast as this guy can go 5.6 miles an hour, or that's just over 10 kilometers an hour. That's an amazing fastness for like, you know, think of how big they are and think of how fast they, those little legs have to move. The fastest flying insect is this dragonfly. These are the hunters. Those great big eyes there, those are predator eyes. And so they will be able to catch insects, but they can fly either, you can look at it as between 35 and 40 miles an hour or 90 kilometers an hour. So next time you're in the car and you're driving through a town or you're going from place to place, look at the speedometer on your car or maybe ask an adult to tell you how fast they're going and imagine that that dragonfly might be flying faster than you are going in your car the other one is a hawk moth and a hawk moth you looks like of those at all kareen pardon harry asked if you had a video of those I don't have a video. It's the one thing I don't have, because do you know how difficult it is to get a video of that? So I don't have that, but I do have a video of a ladybug flying. So here, actually, tell you what, let me see if I can get my video. Let me see if it'll allow me to share my video. And because this ladybug flying is actually really neat. So I need to know if and when you see it. Yeah, we yeah. don't see it. You okay. might that's what that, that's okay. That's okay. What I'll do is I will stop sharing and then I will share this. So, so you have to, so this video is really kind of neat because this, whoops, this will give you an idea. Hold on. This will give you an idea of what it looks like. So I'm going to, so there's a ladybug ready to go. Okay. You see that? Look at it going. Watch, so there's the top, there's the, there's the literal, but look at the wings. Okay, I'm gonna stop it just for a second. Stop it just for a second. Because what I want you to do is at home, I know I can't see you, but that's okay. At home, I want you to pretend you're a ladybug and I want you to raise and lower your wings. How are you flying? How do your wings move if you are a ladybug? So keep. So try that. I want to, so you can do that at home. So maybe they're moving up and down. Maybe they're moving side to side. Let's find out because this is what is so cool about a ladybug. Watch the way her wings move. Come on, little ladybug. Okay. Oh, it's doing that. Hold on. There. Okay. We go. So it's going slow motion. So remember, her wings have been all tucked away underneath inside that elytra. And is it freezing? Oh, it's freezing. Let's see if we can get it going. I don't know if I'm going to get it going. It might be frozen. Oh, it's coming, coming, coming. Here she comes. You're moving now. Hope you can see it. because they have to wait till their wings are fully formed. But look at that. It, they go up to the front and back and up to the front and back because they can't go up and down because of these elytra, which all beetles have, and that protects their wings. That is so cool. It is. So I, I, I wish I had. So let me just see if I can switch back to this because this shows you the wing beats. Can you see my little wing beats here? No, it's gray, Kareen. That's okay. That's what I need to know. That's what I need to know. Okay, because it's very interesting. This is a, 
slightly different experience than before. Oops, no, that's not what I wanted. Sorry, 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 sorry. Not what I wanted. Um, let me just go. Let me just get this. Uh, oh, that's right. Okay, just a minute. Okay. Where's my insect there? All right. So I have to keep going back and forth, but we'll, we'll stop sharing. Okay, so we'll get this. There we are. Okay, so that shows you how fast the wing beats go. Okay, so a honeybee has a terribly fast wing beat. So the beats per second. So, you know, imagine you, how fast could your wings go or your arms go? And even a white butterfly, a cabbage white, they're 12 beats per second, but a dragonfly, so certain dragonflies, they may not be able very fast, their wings may not go down back and forth or up and down very fast, but they can fly faster than anything else. Okay, so let's, let's uh, go on to, let's go on to another presentation, let's go on to, one of the students wanted to know if you had any fossilized um, insects to show. Ah, so funny you should ask that. So can you see my slide with all of this? With all my, my, my choices. There you okay. go. So there, I do not personally have any fossilized insects. I don't. I wish I did, but I don't. I have fossilized shells, but not insects. But that is a dragonfly. So that dragonfly was around over 300 million years ago. Okay. Its wingspan was 2.5 feet. So all you need to do is put your arms out. Now my arms are bigger, but your arms will be the right size. You would be perhaps just a little bit bigger than the dragonfly. He weighed over a pound, so think of a pound of butter. Now it says about the size of a crow. I think he was actually bigger than a crow. So just imagine how big that would be. And then there are also insects that they have found in a special stone called amber. And amber is the fossilized, like when you look at a pine tree or a spruce or a fir, you sometimes see um, resin that's come out onto the bark. What happens is that resin, sometimes an insect long, long, long time ago would get caught in that resin and it would fossilize and it becomes amber. And that's how they knew about some of the insects. There is a mosquito millions of years ago. There you go, in amber. Okay, so I'm going to stop sharing, but I also want to know um, from uh, Mally how we're doing with time. Just like Jurassic Park, exactly, exactly. I'm wondering if there's any... Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, we probably just have a couple of minutes. So students, do you have any questions? I know, um, uh, Gibbler had a question way back, but you were speaking. Yes. Um, he just wanted to know, can bugs transmit COVID-19? Because I know that that's something that we could maybe be concerned about. Not as far as I know, and not as far as the research has discovered. Uh, as far as I know, um, COVID-19 is more transmitted from mammals, which is what we are, we're mammals, um, to other mammals. Um, and it's not to all mammals. There was a thing about in a, in a zoo in the United States, I believe that there were tigers or something like that, I think that were infected with COVID-19 because okay. one of the keepers had been. But it is a, it's a mammal to mammal transmission. Insects are not involved with COVID-19 whatsoever. Okay. Yes, that is an absolute. Yes. 
And Kira wanted to know me. She might have missed the beginning. How many bugs are there in the world? There are millions of bugs. There are more bugs than there are us. But in, in variety, there are about a million different species. At least those are the ones we know about. But you know how small they can be. So we may not know about all the different bugs that are out there because they can be so small. So people are always finding new insects. You could be some of those people too. You could be entomologists. That's cool. It is. Okay. It is. In your opinion, Corrine, what is the creepiest, scariest insect from Charlotte and Isaiah? Oh. oh. That's a hard question. Because see, okay. All right. All right. So there's one insect here. I'm going to show you this. There's one insect that I really don't like. And it's, it's because it is actually the smelliest insect. Ew. And it's this one. It's called a brown marmorated stink bug. And they actually come from Asia, but they were, they're now in Canada. And if you step on this bug, it stinks to high heaven. It's just terrible. So I avoid this bug as much as possible. But I do find it quite pretty, but I do avoid this bug a lot. So I hope that I hope that's helpful. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, uh, Kieran wants to know, do you have any praying mantis? Funny you should ask that. Let me see if I can get my praying mantis. Now, I don't have any live praying mantis right now because it's just a little bit too early in the year to find live ones, but I have oh, Lily found one in her room. What? You found one in your room? Boy, I've never had something like that happen. Okay, you see mine? Wait a minute, I gotta get some leaves out of the way. Get my big hands out of the way. There, do you see my praying mantis? Yep. yep. So I did find this one last year and I've been looking after him there. So he's he's in he's in a little container right there. But you can see just like just like the the dragonfly, he's got great big predator eyes. So you know that an insect is going to be a predator or hunting other insects when they've got those great big eyes. That's one really good hint. But um Thank you so much, Corrine. That was fascinating. And I like how you had like the uh, choose your own adventure and choose your own bug or insect and yeah. how the students had a uh, choice and really good questions, ladies and gentlemen. Um, so thanks for joining us. And I bet you Corrine's going to want to join the next session because we're going to look at what an owl eats by looking at owl poop um, with uh, Lannis from uh, Ann Arbor, and then we have stress with Lee. Uh, oh, wow. uh, yeah, we and Kareen, I think we all need to join that one. And <laughs> I, I see some of my students from Miss Swigert's class. And I noticed that. Yeah, that's so great. And I know there's friends from all over. And we have the planets with a real astrophysicist and they're like real, she's amazing. And then at the end of the day, we have yoga to compress. Oh, and oh, tomorrow we have another astronaut. So it's gonna be great. You guys are having some busy, busy times and that sounds oh, wonderful. Yeah. So um, this was great, Corrine, and we might even book this again when the bugs are back out, maybe in June, so we can yeah, well, there. And I'll be able to get, so when it gets warmer, I'll be able to, uh, I have a nice little place that I go down to my, to a wetland, to a pond, and I can do some, I might do a special presentation on water insects. 
Water insects. That would be really cool. And Kerrigan said, thank you. The praying mantis was really cool. It looked like a green man in a coat. It does, doesn't it? Very formal. Yeah. 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 He's got his tux on, his green tuxedo. Yeah. That's right. Often you see it throughout the, as they do characters in insect cartoons. So thanks, guys. And we'll see you soon in Owls. Yep. Bye, Bye, guys. Take care.